delegates from the BRICS countries and uh, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I can't agree more uh, to what Mr. Alok said just now. And so nicely put it when you talked about the fact that uh, from, I say, from South Africa to India and um, from Russia to Rio is quite a distance. And yes, it's true, a lot of people are asking, this is a very, very strange relationship. How is it going to happen? But you're absolutely right. India is used to this. This is what our democracy is all about. This is where we actually begun. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, or from Gujarat, we've managed to live together and do a good job of it. So I think that you're absolutely right. This relationship was meant to be. And I'm sure in time to come, there's going to be a lot of learning that we will gain from this process. So I want very much to welcome you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I'm really very happy that you've given me the opportunity to be able to welcome all these ladies and gentlemen here in Jaipur. And I want you all to know that this is really a lovely time because everything goes green after the monsoons. And uh, I don't think that any other state will underline monsoons. We do because we are a desert state. So when the rain comes and when everything goes green, it's beautiful and you have come at just the right time. Everyone is happy, welcoming and looking forward to this visit. I hope that you have had the opportunity of spending a little time looking around and enjoying some of the hospitality of the people of the state. So the five, uh, uh, the five uh, countries that actually constitute this are so very diverse and think so very differently that sometimes when you talk about it or when you think about it, they should really be together. But these are large, diverse, and hugely populous countries. And maybe that's one of the things that is holding us together is our populations. You have populations, we have populations. And we all talk about the youth, and that's the only way we can talk about populations today. You really can't do away with them. So we have to compliment ourselves and say that, you know, we are very young countries with huge populations, and we now have to set about doing something about those. And this is probably one of the reasons why we are all together. Because we have come to the realization that these are problems that we are going to have to face and create situations where these young people actually are enabled and therefore help enable our own state or country, whichever it is. Understanding that the important base over here are our people. And even though we may be culturally dissimilar, because there are so many states who speak different languages, who have different heritages, but we are cohesive because of the spirit of cooperative federalism, as just as you <coughs> mentioned, um, that India is committed to. We've been committed to this before then, that we're going to have to look after. And by 2030, India expects to house 40% of its population in its... It has to be people friendly. So in sharp, in sharp uh, sort of contrast to gated communities, non-motorized transport, then these are some of the components that can go towards actually allowing a city to become what they call, or at least set it on its path to becoming smart. So it is imperative that smart city initiatives become a smart mix between greenfield and brownfield components. We cannot depend on just one or the other. So we today are in dialogue with many companies in order to locate and develop smart habitations, which will become industrial and residential enclaves, non-polluting and <coughs> providing employment opportunities. Now support to the knowledge industry in general here in Rajasthan and startups in particular are a part of this very well thought out process. This is a process I think that we all need to start to follow. So in Rajasthan with the support of the of the government of India, um, Jaipur, Ajmer, Udaipur, and Kota. These are four of our, we have seven very big cities. If you look at Maharashtra, Maharashtra has Mumbai. If you look at uh, uh, down south, uh, you have Chennai, uh, or you have Bangalore. But here in Rajasthan, there are four, seven cities. And all seven cities are as important as the other. In all, we are trying to see that they develop also in the same fashion. 
so that they grow together and they provide the opportunity for people to choose the kind of quality of life that they wish and live in the cities that they have, but those cities should all be able to provide that kind of infrastructure for them. And I'm very proud to say that four of our cities, Jaipur, Ajmer, Udaipur and Kota, which is out of the seven, are today being developed as smart cities. I think that they only chose four, seven would be too much, but I think <laughs> seven probably, you could probably look at Rajasthan and say that in the seven, you could be moving in that direction because all of the basic ingredients are there. Now there are many components that are, as I said, looking, I mean, <coughs> included in smart infrastructure and smart governance and our late president said it very nicely. He said, uh, Shri Abdul Kalamji, that the right signal is that technology is going to boost the economic development of our nation. This is the, I mean, and today we realize the success of our efforts are going to be actually dependent on our choice of partners. This is also going to make a lot of difference to us. And I'm happy to inform you that Jaipur today, in smart lighting, IT enabled services, in smart analytics and public safety, interactive kiosks, of course, remote e-governance solutions, parking management systems, and enabling connectivity with public spaces through creation of these hotspots or Wi-Fi connectivities. These are, today actually, uh, Jaipur has also been uh, called one of the lighthouse cities of the world. It's the first in, um, in South Asia, and is now also a member of this elite club, which uh, have cities like Hamburg, Barcelona, and Adelaide as part of the initiatives. Of course, we are also looking to pass this on to others. Some of our cities have some unique challenges. Places such as Jaipur itself or Ajmer, Kota, and Udaipur are actually open air museums. So if you walk around them, you'll be able to see the kind of havelis, the kind of palaces, you'll be able to see the kind of garden layouts. There are some wonderful things you'll be able to see. Art, um, in some of its purest form, that miniature art, which is now become collector's items. Um, urban center settlements, some of these are showcasing thousands of years of cultural evolution and this is why this state remains one of the favorite tourist destinations. We've also now become a part of, so I'm saying all the components that we've talked about include heritage, including crafts and folk arts. So today we are nominated as the city of crafts and folk arts by UNESCO. The World Craft Council has declared Jaipur as the craft city and these honors bring with them an additional responsibility to that we actually look to see modern inputs seamlessly merge with the heritage character. Now, some of the countries have done this very, very nicely. I actually had the opportunity of just traveling to Russia uh, not even a month ago. And uh, how beautifully, I mean, uh, things have been done um, in St. Petersburg, in Moscow itself, from the tourist point of view, it was completely beautiful. And I um, had the pleasure of seeing not just tourism, but also the rest of the smart city components, particularly in St. Petersburg, come together. It was like being in a part in, uh, what would you say, part of a painting. It was so very pretty. And I, I really believe there was a lot for us to learn from that. Um, I really believe there's a lot that we could learn from each other. I had the opportunity of going to China, for example. And not so long ago, I mean, in your terminology, it's, long, uh, it's been a long time because you move so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went there, and, at the, and I'm not going to date myself by saying when, and yes, it was around the time when you were just starting the new airport and the new airport shell was standing. And uh, we felt sorry, we said, okay, another country like us. <laughs> and uh, the road was just being made, there were big gashes along the side. Um, that was okay. A few, not that many years, I mean, maybe four or five years later, I came back again as a small industries minister and I and landed at the same airport and um, time sort of uh, just sort of compresses because 
I'm used to long periods of time. And when I saw this, the airport was completed, the road was done, there was a forest on the side of the road, everything had been taken care of, the sewerage sanitation, cleanliness and everything. Was and I thought, my God, there's something that we can learn from this. So there is something to be learned from all, each of us. And I think the time has come for us to be able to do this. So besides harnessing the all-important demographic dividend that we all have, Smart cities are of actually little use without smart citizens. We really need the smart citizen to be able to understand that. Therefore, education is very, very important in all our countries. It's so important for people not only to educate themselves within that country, but to travel outside of it, because traveling outside is also an education. 